The endorphin range from Saucony played a big part in the resurgence of the brand over the last three or four years. And the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed became very popular shoes. And I think the Endorphin Speed was actually outselling Nike's Vaporflies at one point in time, which is pretty impressive. Over the years, I've pretty much run in every single version of the Endorphins, including the road and the trail shoes, but I haven't ever run in the Endorphin Shift. This is the latest version of the shoes. So let's jump into the video and take these out for their first run. Welcome back viewers, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Thanks for joining us for another video and I hope everybody is fit and well out there and training hard. Now if you're new to the channel or our first impressions videos, what we tend to do is give you guys a few facts and figures on the shoe, we break down the construction in a little bit more detail, then we get them on our feet, grab the cameras and we take the shoes and you guys at home out on the first run. So first things first and the new Endorphin Shift 3 now retails in the UK for a 140 pounds so there has been unfortunately a 10 pound increase on the price which is not a great place to start and never a good thing in my book but there has been a lot of updates and a lot of changes made to the latest version uh, they weigh in at 282 grams in a men's uk 9.5 and it runs off a four mil heel offset you can see we got a pretty hefty midsole on this shoe so when it comes to stack height you actually get 39 mil on the heel and 35 mil under your forefoot. Now the latest version of the shift is pretty much a brand new shoe from the ground up. So let's start with this new upper design first. And this time around Saucony have gone for a lightweight engineered mesh with lots of small perforations worked around that toe box just to help with airflow and breathability. We got a moderate level of padding in the tongue, around the ankle collar and in the heel. And that tongue actually uh, forms kind of an internal liner within that upper. So it's, it's a bit like a sort of booty construction, giving you that nice sort of midfoot lock down and hold so you feel nicely connected to the upper. We've got some printed overlays wrapping around the heel and working around those lace eyelets and toe box. The version we've actually got is uh, sock in his Visi Pro colorway. So these printed overlays on the heel and the lace eyelets are actually high vis. So should really stand out when we're on those darker winter to runs and it's a really nice sort of safety feature finishing up the upper we've got an elasticated heel tab just to make it a bit easier to get in and out of the shoe and we've got some nice bold funky colored laces moving down to this pretty hefty midsole design and we've got a deeper bed of power run cushioning to offer you that sort of plusher softer feel underfoot We've got a lighter, more streamlined heel cup, just to give you that sort of locked in and well supported feel in the back end of the shoe and a deeper form fit design. So you should feel that it offers a, an improved fit and feel wrapping around your foot. And I'm super glad to see that Saucony have still kept in their brilliant speed roll technology. I've been a massive fan of this over the years and I think the brand has got that midsole geometry just right within their endorphin lineup. If I flip the shoe over, you can see that they've added uh, in the latest version of the shift, this torsional heel groove. Uh, that's claimed to provide a smoother transition from heel to forefoot. And you can also see we've got Saucony's super durable XT900 rubber in all the high wear areas. However, there is quite a lot of exposed EVA on this outsole as well. So gonna be really interesting to see how that performs when it comes to durability. So there you have it, a bit of information on the latest version of the Endorphin Shift. We'll obviously talk more and break down the performance and the shoe in a bit more detail when we're back from our run. But I think the time has come to lace these up and to get out running. So we'll see you guys out there. Okay, firstly, I hope everybody watching this video in America is enjoying the shoe and sock combo. And a big shout out to all the followers and supporters of the channel in the US. As far as the shoe goes, 
I am really surprised. I really didn't know what to expect. And if I'm honest, I've always kind of missed out the shift because it's looked like a pretty clunky, pretty bulky shoe. And what with the endorphin speed being so versatile and performing well, I've just never given it a go. It is clearly a very well balanced shoe because it feels way lighter on your feet than it does when you actually pick the shoes up and very impressed with the feel and the comfort in that power run midsole. Again, way softer than I expected and giving me, you know, good sort of energy return and I was running along. Um, yeah, really impressed, first impressions. Can't believe how good the shoe feels. We're hoping to get a nice steady seven miles in today. So what, we've done just over two and a half already and I've got to say it, the lungs are feeling a bit better. Obviously, we're on the road this time and it's a nice flat run in and I'm running about eight minute mileing, so taking it nice and steady, but the lungs are definitely improving. It looks like it's another sockety shoe that is working really well for my foot shape. I feel well dialed in, well connected to that upper, hugging my midfoot. I think that sort of internal line and that sort of booty construction makes the shoe feel super plush inside. And just the right level of padding when it comes to that tongue, the ankle collar and the heel cup. I'd say they fit true to size. I went with a 9.5. They fit really well in that. And to be honest, I always find Sockety are probably the most consistent brand when it comes to their sizing. It's pretty gloomy out here. What? Not even three o'clock yet. Overcast. Lots of grey clouds around, so hopefully it doesn't run. But while we're four miles down, another three miles to go, let's crack on. Okay. So we've reached the turning point and we are heading home. Well, that has been a thoroughly enjoyable run and I'm over seven miles already, so it's gonna be way over eight miles by the time we get home. And it's just felt really good. Good to have my lungs back to be able to breathe again. And I can't really fault anything with the Endorphin Shift 3 straight out of the box. Nice, comfortable upper, really good performing midsole, and it feels very efficient underfoot. So just a really nice shoe to run in. But let's get back and we're gonna break down the performance in a bit more detail. And we'll see you guys back at the studio. I personally think it's always great when you put a running shoe on for the first time and it really surprises you and surprises you in a good way. And the Endorphin Shift 3 is definitely one of those. Like I said out there on the run that I've always been put off by the looks of the shoe. And uh, I can definitely say for me, it performed way better than I thought it would. And we ended up doing nine miles or just shy of nine miles by the time we got home. And hopefully that means I can get some consistent training back in and start to build those longer runs up because we we got some big plans for next year when it comes to our race calendar so it would be really beneficial if I can get some good mileage back in my legs. But back to these and how they performed out there on today's run. But first of all, I'd really be interested to hear from you guys. And if you've ran in the previous two versions of the shift and you've now got the latest shoe, what do you think? Do you think all these big changes have made a massive difference to the performance and it's the best shift running shoe to date? Well, let us know all about it in the comments below. I've always seen the shift as that kind of forgotten about running shoe within the endorphin range. And I've never really understood where it fits in that lineup. Uh, after today's run, I can definitely see where it fits in now because I personally think it would make a really good shoe to sort of soak up all those steady miles you run throughout the week. Now, don't get me wrong, with that speed roll technology worked into that midsole, the shoe could definitely handle a few quicker sessions throughout the week as well. And I actually found myself on today's run, I just wanted to keep it nice and steady coming back from illness, but my pace gradually creeped up, to be honest, without me knowing. And I was running some sort of low seven minute miles. I think a lot of that just comes down 
down to that brilliant midsole geometry. It really feels efficient and feels like it's really helping you with that forward motion. The level of cushioning in that midsole was another very pleasant surprise. And obviously you look at the shoe, it's got this deep stack of midsole and you'd expect it to be cushioned, but I sometimes find that this standard power run compound can feel quite firm underfoot. Not the case in these. They felt very soft and very bouncy out there on today's run. And I think a lot of that comes down to the brilliant Power Run Plus insoles that they have in them. Big fan of these in the Peregrine 12 and the Ride 15. And it's a, it's a nice, thick helping of Power Run Plus, which is a very soft, high energy returning compound, but also super durable. So these should keep the shoe feeling nice and soft and bouncy for long periods of time. No issues to report when it comes to the upper. Just found it a very comfortable place to put your feet while you're running. Nine miles straight out of the box, no rubbing, no irritation, nothing like that. And it just felt like I'd been running in the shoe for a couple of months and I'd already got it nice and bedded in. Uh, when it comes to them perforations, they seem to be working really well. Upper felt very breathable. And Saucony have done a really good job when it comes to the level of padding, in my opinion. Just the right amount in the tongue, around the ankle collar and in the heel. So it feels nice and plush but it still allows you to get a good lockdown around your foot. The only thing I will mention is I'm not fully convinced by this new torsional sort of groove worked into that midsole. It looks like the right kind of length and the right kind of dimensions to maybe become a bit of a stone trap and there's nothing more frustrating than a running shoe that picks up stones. Uh, nothing happened today, didn't pick up any but to be honest I didn't really run in any areas where that could happen so definitely going to be keeping a, a beady eye on that over the coming weeks and fingers crossed that that's not the case. So wrapping up with our first impressions and it really has been a great first run in the Endorphin Shift 3 and uh, I personally think if they've always felt like this then I've been missing out over the years and it's going to be really good to get some more miles in the shoe over the next couple of weeks especially a couple of longer efforts just to see how they handle longer miles and then we'll be back with our full in-depth review. Good to see another well put together update from the Saucony brand and they really are on a bit of a roll this year when it comes to their road running lineup. Next up when it comes to first run first impressions videos are these. Yep it's the new New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V3. Probably one of my most anticipated road running shoes of the year just because I was such a big fan of the previous version the V2. Loved the way that shoe felt so expectations are really high for these. I've heard some good and some bad feedback so fingers crossed Toes crossed, everything crossed that it performs just like the previous version. But for now guys, thanks for watching the video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It only takes a second to do and it is completely free. But don't forget to hit that bell icon as well so then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. You can also follow us on our other social media platforms whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava. And we've also got some great merch available at runforadventure.uk. We got some really cool looking Maui wraps, some organic tees, organic hoodies, and it's a great way of supporting the channel. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll be back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. We've got a moderate level of padding in the tongue, around the ankle collar and in the heel. And that tongue actually forms kind of an internal liar, liar, liar? internal liar. It's an internal liar. They're the worst, them internal liars. External liars are okay, but internal ones, can't stand them.